We're watching uh, the shares of Moderna. The uh, company reported results moments ago, a smaller than expected loss. Revenue uh, was above forecasts, although uh, down from a year ago as COVID vaccine sales uh, fell. Joining us now, Stefan Bonsell, Moderna CEO. And it, I don't know if that really summarizes the daunting task that, that you've been facing, Stefan. I mean, th there's worse things in the world. You have a great company that's doing amazing things. Uh, I didn't compare the, the results, of uh, the revenue of this quarter uh, to uh, 2023, or 20, I'm sorry, to, uh, uh, yeah, 2023. But for the first quarter, 167 million versus 1.9 billion in the same period. And, and I just wanted to encapsulate how difficult a post-pandemic, uh, you know, when you had such an incredible run because of the vaccines, this is just a, a you know, a, a, a fact of living in this world that, that you got to try to replace those revenues. Correct. Good morning, Joe. So thank you so much for having me. I'm actually very pleased with first quarter. We are above our plans. We are above consensus. Recently, we signed for the first time Brazil for 12 million doses. And the teams are very busy preparing the fall 24 COVID launch for the new formula and also the RSV launch. On the OPEC side of a company, uh, we made great progress. Remember, we said uh, in November of last year that we're going to relook at our cost structure. We restructured manufacturing to right size it because of, as you say, the demand changing drastically. I'm pleased to report that compared to Q1 of last year to Q1 of this year, we have saved around $800 million of OPEX across manufacturing, R&D, and SGNA. So I think the team has done a great job resizing the company. But what I'm more excited about, of course, is the future, which is we have an amazing vaccine platform. We are anticipating the launch of RSV very soon this spring. We're also uh, going to file the, the flu vaccine, where we have great phase three data. We should get the flu plus COVID combo, you know, the vaccine with both COVID and flu in a single dose, we should get the phase three data very soon, potentially as early as this spring. And then you have the CMV phase three in the fall. We recently at our R&D day shared new data on the EBV being positive. VZV for shingles is also actually looking non-inferior to Shingrix. Uh, and also norovirus for which there is no vaccine on the market. So I think the vaccine platform is coming together very nicely. And in 24, 25, 26, 27, every year you're going to see multiple vaccine launches, which is going to really help tremendously. And they're all going for multi-billion dollar opportunities. And then, of course, there's oncology. Uh, ASCO is coming very soon. And as you know, we'll be presenting the three-year uh, survival data, which we shut the top line in December, which are very exciting. The, uh, I guess we need a, you called it oncology because they're cancer vaccines. But when you talk about your vaccine program, uh, there are myriad uh, things besides COVID, obviously, RSV, other things that can bridge uh, or at least have a bridge for you. But between that, do you view that as a bridge to when the cancer vaccines uh, are, are uh, finally developed, uh, assuming that, that you're successful and, and that they, uh, you know, that it's actually a viable way to treat such a horrific disease? When do you see that being the, ma the, the lion's share of revenue? Late 2020s? So it's going to be a few years because we uh, first have a, a lot of vaccines in infectious disease we're going to be launching. So if you think about the, the numbers between the COVID sales, you know, and then RSV and then flu plus COVID, you know, flu is three times the size of a COVID market in terms of number of doses. So if we are the only player with a flu plus COVID or the first player with flu plus COVID, that will help tremendously, we believe. And then you have the CMV and the other vaccine. At the same time, you know, we believe the duration data that we shared could allow us to file for accelerated approval. So the, the oncology opportunity is really, really large. And if you think about how the technology is working, you know, we shared recently at AACR some new data for head and neck cancer. We've shared before you know, data in lung cancer. So we believe now there's a lot of data demonstrating that the platform of our vaccine right. treatment is working across many tumors. And we think as we're going to go earlier in the disease, we're going to go even a higher response rate because our technology works by leveraging the immune system of a patient to go and basically attack the cancer.